Stop. If you're considering an investment in a solar power system for your home, then stop right there. I want you to watch this video first because I'm going to be teaching you about the biggest solar mistake to avoid and also some of the corners that contractors will cut, leaving you holding the bill. Hi everyone, Joe Ordia here for Solar Surge, and for the past 10 years I've been helping families achieve energy independence using clean, renewable energy. Now, if you're new to the Solar Surge channel, on Solar Surge we talk about everything having to do with home solar power and battery backup systems. Uh, we do product reviews, as well as industry news and relevant new product announcements. Now, in today's video I'm talking about the number one biggest solar mistake to avoid and really, it all has to do with choosing the wrong contractor. First of all, I'd like to start out with some glaring red flags that should give you cause for concern, and I would recommend to go and get a couple of competing quotes before making your decision. Now, the first red flag, and this really should be obvious in today's world, but if the, if the company has no online reviews and no reputation. Uh, in today's world, when contractors do a good job or service providers do a good job, people want them to, to talk about it. And so if your solar company cannot provide references or at least point you to a few dozen online reviews of third parties validating that the company exists, the company has done a good job for them in the past, and hopefully being willing to at least chat with you on the phone or via email uh, to confirm that, that would be my first major red flag and maybe want to look to another service provider. Now, the second red flag, and this one might not seem like a big problem on its surface, but the second red flag is if the contractor asks for a large cash deposit as a down payment. Now, most solar companies will have lines of credit set up with their major suppliers, meaning that if you sign a contract to have a solar system installed for your home, even if you intend to pay direct cash for the system and not using any kind of third-party financing, Generally, the installation company, the contractor, can purchase materials from their supplier on a 30-day or 60-day net terms, meaning that they don't necessarily need to collect all the cash for the material purchase up front. So long as the contractor can complete the job on schedule, they should be able to order the materials, have the materials delivered, installed on your home, have all the, the permits and inspections closed out, and then collect final payment for you before they hit the 30 or 60 day limit with their material supplier. Now, on the other hand, if the contractor is asking for you to pay for the materials uh, up front, that may indicate that the contractor is not in a financially strong position. And unfortunately, we see it in the industry all the time where a contractor will ask for a large deposit on one project and then use some of, the, some of the cash, some of the proceeds to cover expenses finishing up an existing project. And that's not what you want because if that contractor runs into trouble or if sales slow down for whatever reason, that contractor could find themselves out of business, leaving you holding the bill. So the second red flag, glaring red flag to avoid is a contractor that asks for a large cash down payment. Next, I'd like to teach you some of the more subtle corners that contractors can cut to save cost that you might not see right away, but that could also indicate long-term instability of the company. Now, the first is just using cheap equipment. Now, I know a lot of folks in the solar world are shopping and comparing different quotes based on a price per watt. But in my opinion, it's not sufficient to compare and evaluate contractors simply on the price per watt of the solar system. You also have to consider the quality of the equipment and which companies are manufacturing the equipment being installed um, on your solar panels, uh, on your inverters, and on your batteries or other additional components on the system. Uh, in fact, if I had to rank those three components, I would say your inverter system is number one, going to be most impactful on the overall functionality and reliability of the system. Uh, number two would be your battery backup. If you're choosing to install solar with battery storage, choosing the right battery is probably the second most important decision. And then third is the actual solar panel itself. You know, most solar panels, there, there really are no moving parts to wear out or break down. So as long as there's not physical damage to the solar panel, most solar panels are going to perform well over the entire 25 years of the warranty. 
Now, of course, some solar panels will degrade at a slower rate. So if you're looking at a premium panel like Maxion or uh, REC Alpha Pure R, those panels are gonna degrade at a slower rate. But just about all tier one solar panels, unless there's physical damage, like a tree falls on it, they're, they're pretty much gonna do what they're supposed to do over the lifetime of the system. The second more subtle corner that the contractor can cut is not carrying adequate workers' compensation insurance. Now, this is one of those expenses that the contractor can take, take the risk and avoid the workers' comp insurance, and really nothing would really happen to them until such time that one of their installation workers is injured on the job and needs to make a claim for medical service. Now, I should tell you, when I was installing solar, workers' comp insurance was my largest single line item expense. Uh, and if you think about it, the, the, the solar installation activity is actually combining two of the highest risk activities into one job. You have roofing, right? You've got folks up, in many cases, folks up on the rooftop could be two, three stories above ground. Um, and they're doing high voltage electrical wiring while they're on the rooftop. So you have the risk of electrocution as well as the risk of any, somebody slipping, falling, and injuring themselves on the roof. And so from the insurance carrier's perspective, that is a very risky business operation and it carries hefty insurance premiums. So a, a contractor that's trying to earn your business on the cheapest price may think that they can cut the corner and not actually carry that adequate workers' compensation insurance. But if a worker slips and falls and gets injured on your property and the contractor can't afford to pay the medical bills for that installer, they may be coming after you as the homeowner. The third more subtle corner that contractors can cut is poorly training their employees. Now, you know, employees, just like anything else, you get out of them what you invest into them. And so if you don't invest the proper time in training your employees and equipping your employees with the best tools and the best knowledge, they're not going to do a very good job. Uh, and sometimes the mistakes may not be apparent for two or three years down the road. For example, something as little as the, the type of wire ties that are used to secure the wiring underneath the solar panel so it doesn't rub against the roof surface. If they use the wrong type of wire ties, those wire ties can snap off over time because again, thermal expansion and contraction with the sunlight and, and cooling down in the evening. So if they use the wrong type of wire ties, those wire ties can snap off, the wires can fall down and will touch the roof surface. And then over time with wind and rain and what have you, you could have a, 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 a slow, steady filing away of the insulation on that wiring to the point where at, over long enough time you could have live voltage energized on the roof surface because the insulation on the wiring has worn away, uh, you know, blowing against the shingles on the roof. And that's just one example of the kind of mistakes that an installer can make when they haven't received the proper training and just don't have the necessary experience. I've also seen it where an installer will take on a brand new piece of equipment without properly training their, their installation crews on how to install the equipment. I've heard it several times from installers. Oh, I just, I watched the video this morning. I, I, I uh, watched the video that said where to hook up the wires and how to, how to run the equipment. And this is my first time actually putting it in. Uh, that's really not the kind of contractor, the kind of installer that you want doing major surgery on your home's electrical system. So yes, although it is less expensive and it's faster to do free video-based training of your installers, they're really not going to have the kind of hands-on expertise needed, especially when you're talking about a complex solar and whole house battery system. And finally, the biggest corner to be cut that you might not see right away is a contractor failing to keep an adequate warranty service reserve. What this means is that most solar companies today are offering a 25 year warranty. And that's pretty much where you have to be to be competitive in today's market is to give homeowners a 25 year guarantee that if anything breaks during the 25 year term of the warranty, the installer will come back and fix it at no cost to the homeowner. Now, responsible contractors will set aside a cash reserve specifically for that purpose only. And we see typically amounts 3% to 5% of your total contract price gets placed in a restricted reserve for future warranty service. Well, fly-by-night contractors don't necessarily keep that warranty reserve. They'll make the, the guarantee at the time of sale, but they won't actually have the cash set aside to pay for those future expenses. They just figure, well, 
we'll figure it out if and when the time comes, I'll find somebody and send somebody out and we'll fix it. And oftentimes what happens is, especially if that contractor is bidding very low, very low pricing at the time of sale, they just don't have the extra cash available to make the repairs. And then it puts them in a position where, well, do I send my crew out to make repairs, which is gonna be costing me cash, or do I send them out to do a new installation, which is gonna bring new cash in? And so if the contractor is on shaky ground financially, he, he may be forced to go and do the new installation, bring some cash in, and then maybe if I can afford it, maybe I'll see if I can find somebody to go and make repairs. Uh, again, that's not the type of contractor that you want as your partner in this 25 year warranty. Well, one thing you can do is bring in third party warranty protection for your solar power system. Uh, for example, one of our partners, Solar Insure, provides a 30 year third party warranty guarantee so that in the unlikely event that the installation contractor that, that does the original installation is no longer in business or for whatever reason is unable to perform under the terms of the warranty, then Solar Insure can reach into its network of pre-qualified, pre-vetted contractors and bring in somebody else to make repairs if needed. So it does give you a little bit extra layer of protection there. Now, the reason Solar Insure is able to do a more thorough vetting is because they are going to have a level of visibility into the contractor beyond what you might have as a homeowner. And here at SolarSurge, that's what we try to do as well, is not just look at what is the online reputation of the contractor, but we actually want to dig in and see what is the financial position of the contractor, including seeing their financial statements, if possible. Uh, you know, I actually have the privilege of qualifying for contractor licensing for a couple of our installation partners in various states. And as part of that process, I actually get to see the financial statements of the contractor um, or of the company as we're submitting for our contractor's license. And so that's the type of visibility that a third party warranty provider like Solar Insure provides into the contractor where you might not see that as a homeowner, if you're just looking at the online reviews, you're not really going to see what is the real financial position of the company. Uh, and unfortunately in today's day and age, you, you can buy online reviews. You know, there, there are call centers overseas that will give you hundreds of online reviews as long as you're willing to pay for it. So it's not really a reliable indicator of the long-term bankability of your contractor. So anyway, folks, if you're in the process of evaluating different solar power options for your home, um, if you need to get more information or if you need to get a price quote, uh, or maybe you already have a price quote from some contractors and you need to get a, a comparison quote, uh, either for the solar installation uh, or perhaps for solar installation with third-party warranty like Solar Insure, uh, you know, we'd be happy to provide some pricing and some information for you. Uh, as always, you can feel free to reach out to us on the link below, set up a quick Zoom call with one of our experts here, and we'd be happy to provide some pricing and some information for you. Um, as always, if you're getting good value from the videos that we publish here on Solar Surge, make sure you hit that thumbs up button uh, and make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. So that way, as we have the new videos coming out, it'll show up on your homepage so you can stay up to date with us. Well, folks, that pretty much does it for today's video. As always, I'm Joe Ordia here, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.